Jones well off the lows of the day, but still down. Broader markets and tech is also up in a funny sort of session. And sir, do the honors. One, two. A good, robust gavel. Trading is now over pretty much around the world on Friday, September the 7th. Cleaning up their mess, the chief executive of British Airways promises compensation to customers after a nasty hack of their systems. Political points, President Trump and Obama now sparring Oh, who deserves credit for the US economic boom. And man versus machine, the race of the drones it's artificial intelligence. I'm Richard Kress, live in the world's financial capital, New York City, where, of course, I mean business. Good evening. Tonight, the chief executive of British Airways tells me Customers will be recompensed after their credit card data was stolen from the BA website and servers. In all, it's believed 380,000 customers have been affected. Their card numbers, expiry dates, and even security codes were all stolen over the course of two weeks. British Airways says it will compensate anyone who loses money as a result. Uh, shares in BA's parent company, IAG, listed in Madrid and London, finished more than 1% lower, although it had been off as much as 3% at one stage. On Quest Express, the chief executive of British Airways said an investigation is underway. BA.com has been running for more than 20 years, and we've never had a data breach of this particular type. What we do know is we now have teams that are working together with our national crime agency and a great, a very large team of actual forensic experts that are going through to try to understand exactly what happened. But our focus remains with our passengers. We want to make sure that they feel comfortable, uh, all their concerns are being addressed. As you mentioned before, if any of them have actually suffered uh, any financial loss as a consequence of this event, we will compensate them. Do you know if anyone has had any loss so far? Has anyone been in touch with you to say, yes, they have actually, there has been identity theft or dishonest transactions? We've spoken to a handful of passengers who are trying to understand what some charges in their credit card may be, but at the moment, we don't have any verified uh, accounts of uh, fraud. But we will continue to work with them. We are interested. We want to be able to be with them uh, when that happens. And again, we will compensate them if they have suffered a financial loss as a consequence of this data theft. The public watching globally will be asking the question, and it's not just to you, Alex, it'd be to any CEO in your situation in a consumer-facing organization. How does this keep happening? What is it that you're not doing or that maybe law enforcement needs to do? How does this happen? I think it's difficult for me to comment at this particular time on some really interesting and very wide subject like that. I think I'm afraid my focus at the moment are my customers. We need to pay attention to whether the, the particular concerns that they have. We need to help them through this process. I think there'll be time later perhaps to think about what else uh, the industry at large uh, could we be doing. What I do know is that British Airways has been investing on technology more and more over all the recent years. We're absolutely committed to hiring the very best technology skills in the marketplace. That's what has allowed us to have a website that has not been uh, breached like it has been over the last couple of weeks and we our intent is to continue doing so so yes lots of questions and we expect uh, to hear from the investigation uh, how all of this can be neutralized further and just to finally to, to, to confirm BA undertakes it will compensate passengers for for what's happened uh, and for how it's happened Yes, we, we, we need to make sure that our passengers' concerns are addressed. So, if any of our passengers' uh, personal financial data, credit card data, has been used uh, fraudulently, we will compensate for that particular expense. There's absolutely no doubt that we will, will them, we will be with them uh, throughout this process. And finally, 
I understand your concentration and focus is on customers, but as the chief executive of British Airways, how much of a reputational risk, how much damage do you think this will cause to BA's reputation? Richard, just two weeks ago, we became 99 years of age. Our absolute objective is to connect Britain to the world and the world to Britain. We do this with a fantastic team of 45,000 professionals. We've gone through a lot. We will be working very hard with our customers, all of our customers, to make sure we get through this successfully. That's Alex Cruz, the chief executive of British Airways, talking to me earlier. Tesla's stock and turmoil. Well, just take a look at the day. The stock fell 6% on Friday. It's down 30% over the last month. And the main driver, two executives are leaving the company. The chief accounting officer resigned less than a month after taking the job. And Tesla's HR chief is reportedly not coming back from a leave of absence. And then, if all that wasn't bad enough, there's simply the bizarre. I mean, it's legal, right? It's totally legal. Okay. How does it work? Do people get upset at you if you do certain things? There's uh, tobacco and marijuana in there. That's all it is. The, the combination of tobacco and marijuana is wonderful. That was Elon Musk on a podcast with Joe Rogan. And it's adding to investor concern about the CEO's behavior. Paul Monica's following it all. Paul? <laughs> It's, uh, I think we're just accustomed right now to Elon Musk being Elon Musk, and his behavior is erratic, to put it mildly. That, that clip over there that we just shown is not going to help restore investor confidence, I think, in Elon Musk. Devil's it's, advocate, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it is that it's just a little too lax. It's a little too loose, I think, that... He needs to be more serious, considering that he is running a company that has continued to lose money. He pledges that they will one day be profitable. He hasn't done so yet. As someone uh, who's going to invest in Tesla, you're not going to be inspired. But again, if that was the only issue that we had with Elon Musk right now, that he was smoking a joint in a podcast, that would be not that big of a deal. This comes at a time where he is accused one of the rescuers in the Thai mining uh, you know, rescue of being a pedophile. He has done increasingly erratic things like tweet that he's going to take his company private, only to a few weeks later say, ah, my bad, we're not going to do that after all. He's had this brain drain with executives. So he has no chief operating officer. There's no Sheryl Sandberg type person to put him in his place. So we... The, the, the loss of these two people, the chief accounting officer, uh, the HR person not coming back, who knows why. But the chief accounting only been there a month. That's more serious because that suggests either poor judgment on who they chose, he didn't fit in or they didn't fit in, or they found something and they didn't like it. It could be one of those. If you believe what the chief accounting officer said in the SEC filing this, uh, you know, that came out, it was just that he seemed to not really appreciate all of the pressure and scrutiny that would come with being a part of this company. And it seemed like a thinly veiled criticism of maybe Musk's behavior as of late. There was nothing in there about problems with the books or what have you. So, so but for a stock to fall 30% in a month is dramatic and worrying, particularly when most uh, supply side analysts um, will tell you that the, the, the pressure is on the downside. Yeah, Wall Street has grown increasingly skeptical yep. of Tesla. The company, as I pointed out, has yet to make a profit. You have a lot of institutional investors that seem to be nervous as well. One of their big money manager holders has already urged him to stop tweeting as much. I think it would probably be a good idea if Musk maybe took a Twitter vacation so that he didn't have to be as in the public spotlight. And again, it all comes back to the point of this is a man who almost brags about how busy but, he is. I sleep at the factory, but he's got time to go on a podcast and smoke a joint? I was going to say something, but I don't need to. <laughs> Thank you. It's Friday. Tesla was one of the factors that drove the markets. There was a most extraordinary day. Uh, if you look at around 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you see that sharp fall. It was just after Quest Express. And it was when Donald Trump made some comments on Air Force One. 
about being ready for more tariffs. And literally in a second, spot the smidgen of green just above. The market was actually up until those comments, and then it turned turtle and never really recovered, although we were off the lows of the day. So it was the strong jobs report as well, 201,000 new jobs, and employment stayed low, wage growth the strongest since 2009. All in all, the American economy is doing undeniably well. And as we see here, uh, unemployment compared to the president's approval on economic issues. Unemployment is going down, but the approval goes down further. The president's handling of the economy is in purple. Generally, one rises as the other falls. Uh, this seems to be flat. Remember, in spite of an economy that's at full employment, and that's what President Trump is looking at when he says he doesn't get enough credit. Mark Preston is CNN's senior politi political analyst, joins me now. On this issue, um, I, I was reading the articles that, that, that you and others have, have written. Is it fair not to give, or isn't it unfair, not to give President Trump more credit for the excellent state of the U.S. economy? Well, well a couple of things. One is he does a very good job, Richard, of giving himself his own credit. So who, far be it from me to, to pile on with the adulation. Uh, look, in many ways, uh, he should uh, get some credit for where the economy is going right now. But just as everyone who's watching uh, your show right now, just as you know, just as we all know, the economy becomes very cyclical. If you want to go back to uh, the end of George W. Bush's presidential term, Barack Obama inheriting a, a world financial crisis, and it basically took eight years, right, to climb out of that hole. Who's to benefit for that? Well, of course, we all are, but politically, President Trump is. Okay, so we have this extraordinary day today where President Obama, former President Obama, mm. well, you tell me, he, he, you know, he, he's, he's made veiled comments in the past, but today was the first time that President Obama came out. He was campaigning, but he also attacked. He also attacked, it was classic Barack Obama, somebody we haven't heard very much from since he left office following the tradition as we have from past presidents to allow their successor some breathing room to be able to work in, you know, not only in domestic issues, but in the foreign, foreign policy uh, sphere. What we saw from Barack Obama today was him actually coming out, to your point, calling out the racism that we have seen, the, the fostering of, of, of those, uh, of neo-Nazis, uh, and quite frankly, Donald Trump in the actions and words that he has said as the chief executive officer. Now, Barack Obama is somebody who does speak very plainly and very truthfully, and he put the blame on those in the audience. If you don't like what President Trump is doing, that's on you. If you don't like what uh, the Congress is doing, that's on you. If you want to make change, you need to get out and vote. Now, those are very simple, but they are tough words, and Barack Obama appears to be back on the campaign trail. Uh, but uh, the, the, you know, the fascinating point is the Democrats, frankly, do not have a strong voice anywhere in the sense that there's, no, there's no person that you point to and say, that's the leader, that's the person we're going over the hill uh, behind. Now, does he effectively, even though, you know, for the midterms, do, does he become that person by default? He will be, and, and, and I'm glad that you, you put it in the terms of, uh, of a time frame, because there, there is a voice that is needed, a national democratic voice that people can rally around. They can rally around issues, you can rally around causes, but it's nice to have that voice. Barack Obama could fill that void. Once you get past the midterm elections, though, you're going to have about 24 voices these are all Democrats who think that they should be the Democratic nominee and run against President Trump in 2020. We get past the midterm elections at the, at the beginning of November, everyone around the world is going to start learning very quickly who some of these senators are, who some of these mayors are, who some of these congressmen are who think that they can take on Donald Trump. Well, President, thank you. Good to see you, sir. you sir. Have a good weekend. You too. Now, as we continue on the Crestman's business, the chairman of J.P. Morgan International tells me the U.S. economy hasn't been this strong in years. And there's a very salutary warning, though, on trade and tariffs. And we head to Syria. Iran and Turkey and Russia say there must be a political solution, but not before one last battle. The latest on the horrific seven-year conflict.